Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I will be doing sort of a different video um, mostly because I've been thinking about this stuff for a while and I sort of had to get it out of my system um, but also because I haven't yet made a video on Dota 2 and since I've been playing that game so much I just thought I'd crank something out um, so in this case it's going to be some thoughts on teaching multiplayer and unfortunately the science behind learning anything is sort of not very well understood and I've been reading a lot of different sort of science papers and cognitive sciences and psychology and I haven't actually been able to create a lot of good answers but what I do have is some quite uh, specific questions that I had in mind um, so first things first, are you a team player? Because um, different games obviously make it easier or harder for you to cooperate with other players and in this case there's a guy here who got the Malk award where you go zero kills, 20 deaths and still win. Um, but yeah, when you're just starting out with the game Obviously you will be bad at that specific game, but if you've played other games you might still have sort of a good understanding of what you're supposed to do. Um, like if you're playing Dota after playing League of Legends or you're playing Battlefield after playing Team Fortress 2, um, you will sort of have a good understanding of what your role in the team is going to be and what you should be either helping your teammates with or doing to destroy for your enemies or just generally sort of communicate well to make sure that your allies know what you're good at and what you might need help with and just asking them to tell you um, what they expect of you which I'm afraid is one of the biggest problems with um, sort of e-communities because um, Dota for instance has sort of a bunch of negative uh, feedback because um, if you're bad um, people are not going to want to teach you things because they just I don't know they just want to pop in the game and play it I don't know uh, but um, learning between players is sort of a rare thing and if I switch to the next one how do you learn anything at all um, because in most cases it tends to be sort of a repetition. Um, do, do a task, you're, you're supposed to um, let's say micro in StarCraft for instance. Um, some tasks are just easier because as I've said in my previous videos the length of the feedback loop uh, is just short enough that you're, uh, you can easily distinguish between what you're doing uh, yeah, you know it. So you do one thing, you check the results, and then you change. Um, the, pro the problem with uh, Dota 2 is that it's just such a complex problem that the feedback loop uh, will get uh, essentially infinite if you're not able to um, sort of break down the problem. Because if we bring up the complexity here, these are some of the characters. This is actually an older picture, um, so there are even more uh, heroes implemented since this was released. Um, at, least, at least I think so, like Phoenix. Um, yeah, I can't come up with any. Ember Spirit, Earth Titan. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Um, so just by having these, let's say you have a hundred. 100 heroes times 10, uh, 10 heroes in each game. Um, the combinations of just the heroes are basically endless, even though not all of them are viable. Um, and then to that you add lanes, which can consist of anywhere between one and three players. You have items. Um, so, and this is just sort of the starting point let's say you get a kill in one lane then that lane changes forever basically um, and all the team fights with the positioning the 
The complexity of Dota 2 is just such a staggering amount that you have to break down. Uh, for instance, you have to break down heroes into categories like support or carry or ganker or initiator. Um, and even then you get sort of a bunch of different categories and some heroes will fit into different categories depending on how they're played, uh, what items they're getting and stuff like that. So breaking down the problem um, is one major aspect of Dota because if you compare it to something like uh, Battlefield for instance um, or you compare it to uh, Team Fortress 2 where all the classes have their uh, obvious strength and, strength and weaknesses and all of the classes also have a very specific um, profile that allows you to identify them easily over long distances unlike uh, Battlefield, where people look kind of alike, regardless of the class they're playing. Um, and the problem is also that the time frame in Dota 2 is extremely short. Um, like, any, a fight can take, let's say, um, let's say 5 to 10 seconds. I would say, if a fight has been going for 10 seconds, uh, you should probably be knowing who is winning by then. Um, as the game goes longer, like after the 40 minute mark maybe, uh, fights might be taking longer because you have more stuff like mechanism, four staffs, uh, pipe, and things that just allow you to live longer. And spells sort of become less useful as the game progresses because they don't scale with items. So uh, the chance of someone being bursted down in the first few seconds of a game or a fight um, becomes less likely as the game progresses. But on the other hand, um, some carries will also get better items, allowing them to kill people faster. Something like uh, Kunkka with uh, Crystalis, for instance, would pretty much allow him to kill maybe two or three people in one swing, depending on how the game goes. And this time frame also means that communication is going to be a problem. Because, uh, let's say it's, you have 10 seconds. How many sentences do you really have time to say in 10 seconds? Um, it's a very low amount, uh, which means you have to do pre-planning. And you basically have to uh, make sure everyone knows what to do before the fight even starts. Which is basically where you run it into problems. Because for this to, uh, to actually work, everyone must be on the same page. And if you start looking into the science of this, um, a concept that you sort of come across a lot is a mental model. And what that means is basically different people interpreting the same situation in the same way. And um, I sort of came up with a, uh, a way to test this. Basically what you have to do is just take players MMR or matchmaking ranking, whoops, that's a weird R, matchmaking ranking, and then you sort of give them a bunch of problems, like in this situation um, you could do three things, you could say um, click on the image where you want to go with your hero, let's say there's a guy in the middle here, this screenshot isn't super relevant, uh, but let's say you're in the middle and uh, you just have a sort of counter or something that keeps track of position. So you basically have uh, question A. Where do you go in this image? And some people might want to go forward, some people might want to go back. Um, so you can basically create a heat map out of the results. Um, so that's question A. B is um, who do you want to attack, for instance? Or who do, who are you going to? Yeah, let's say let's go with attack because that might include spells. And then for C, uh, which spells are you going to use? Uh, spells or items? And then you can have sort of a bunch of checkboxes, um, and people can take whatever they want. And then after you get this, you sort of compare the similarity of high uh, MMR people to low MMR people and see if the um, the results are more similar 
with people who are of a higher skill. Uh, because that would basically give you an answer. Is a shared mental model of the game important to um, to your results, basically? Um, the problem is, even if we figure out that, yes, people, people who have the same knowledge of the game or interpret the situations in the same way do well, that doesn't really teach us to do uh, to get people to that level, uh, which is sort of the problem here. Um, and even though people might interpret the situation uh, the same way or somewhat the same way, um, they still have to communicate properly with their teammates. Um, and the problem with Dota is that people act like assholes a lot of the time. Uh, which I said before, which means that if you get a certain number of infractions, you will be muted, which means you can't even type to your teammates, which kind of becomes a big problem, because the only time you have time to type is when you're out of a fight, um, which is obviously when you should be communicating, because you don't have the time for it otherwise. So communication um, and the mental model is sort of one step to overcome in this case. Um, one of the things that are actually in the game already is the coaching mode. Um, but I only think that applies to one player on a team. So you can basically choose to play. You start playing and you say, yes, I want to coach. Coach me. Oops, I can't spell coach. Never mind. Coach me! And then you get someone who basically pings uh, your map where to go, um, probably what items to buy, and they can speak to you and only you. And they can only see what your team sees, I believe. I've never actually tried this, but it kind of interests me. Uh, the problem with the coach is that it only applies to one player on the team, um, which means, um, sure, they can sort of help you, but since they have to communicate with you, and then you have to communicate with your team, it creates an extra boundary. And if you only have a very short time frame, you're not going to be able to communicate well with your team. So if your team had a coach, uh, playing it sort of like an RTS, uh, meaning you could basically select a guy and you could create a checkpoint, and then he gets that sort of line on his monitor. Um, it would probably be helpful, or at least pretty cool. Um, it would work the same way in Battlefield 4, and I actually talked about that uh, commander mode when I did the B4 video, um, which is kind of underwhelming because you can't really um, you can't control individuals. You can only control squads, and if you can't control stuff like vehicles or uh, any sort of finer control at all, it becomes uh, fairly pointless. But something like Dota, which is... Uh, it just used to be Warcraft 3, so it was a strategy game to be begin with, and it should be fairly easy to uh, work something like that in. Obviously Dota 2 is a new engine, so uh, yeah, it's a different case. But another problem with games is that there's a big difference between private and public information and what I mean with this is that private information is something only you know public information is something your entire team knows so if you compare Battlefield with Dota 2 uh, coordinating in Battlefield is obviously a bigger problem because you only have a smaller viewpoint uh, you aren't able to see uh, all the way around you um, like you do in Dota 2 where your view is essentially the same as uh, your allies' view, apart from things like um, spells you're throwing, uh, your cooldowns, item cooldowns. Uh, hey, I just noticed this is a really old picture because this item and this item looks differently. Whatever. But yeah, so communication is what takes information from your private information and moves it across to the public one. Um, 
and again the time frame is the problem something like battlefield is obviously harder because uh, you only see part of the screen but the difference in this case is the uh, tagging uh, symbol that applies or that shows up over enemies heads which basically allows you to um, direct your allies to uh, targets unfortunately it's a bit weird in that you're only able to sort of apply the same thing to everyone meaning that you can't prioritize one target over another um, and in Dota 2 you have your sort of quick menu um, chat lines I suppose the problem with this is that um, people have to read it to understand what you mean and even then you can't really um, target one player like you can't say this is our number one target this is number two this is number three which is something that uh, a coach again could uh, plays out um, and another problem with Dota 2 is that early mistakes are costly um, because most graphs in games tend to be like this there are actually very few games in Dota 2 that are even to the point of it being a sort of interesting game uh, even if you remove the last let's say the last five or six minutes of the game um, because that's just basically killing the rest of the stuff that's in the base and you get a bunch of extra gold for that even if you remove all that stuff the number of games that are uh, where teams are within 5000 gold of each other um, is a very low number I would say probably um, one in eight or ten games or something like that is games that I actually go hey that was a cool game because both teams had a chance of winning and it's obviously pretty weird to be playing a game where you only really enjoy a tenth of all games because um, early mistakes tend to have a huge impact on the game and the problem with this is that um, the most important fights sure some of them will happen late game but the things that set you up for late game like if you have a uh, I saw a stat somewhere that said if you're 15,000 gold ahead at uh, 20 minutes you basically have a 99% chance of winning something like that um, so um, the, the costly mistakes in the beginning are the ones where you don't really know anything about your teammates and the um, so when you just start a new game as you can see here the first few minutes let's say up to seven minutes right here uh, nothing really happens and then a few mistakes like this is probably one mistake here is another mistake and then it basically goes downhill from there so here's the third one so you have three attempts in this case to sort of break the game and if you only have seven minutes from meeting new players and trying to figure out how they view the game and their mental model for interpreting different situations you're going to have a very rough time because if you only have three chances to try to learn how your team plays and then the game is over um, you're going to have sort of these really weird games a lot of the time um, so then how do we fix this how do we get players to communicate well and um, sort of share their mental models with each other um, to interpret the situation the same way now I'm making the assumption that having this shared mental model is going to make you a better team player because it both it allows you to rely on your teammates and know what they're going to do and secondly it allows your teammates to rely on you because they know that you're going to use your spells to help them to get away or you're going to use your spells to chase down enemies and you're not going to get into stupid fights and stuff like that uh, wards will be placed so you can farm safely and all these number of uh, basically small things that make up big portion of the game 
because if you're playing a carry for instance and your team never shows up to help you and you don't have any wards you're going to have a very bad time regardless of if your uh, teammates are there or not something like just a ward uh, at the lane here and of course I'm drawing on the wrong layer so just having wards in the river having lane wards um, things like this makes it uh, basically it makes it so that you can fend for yourself instead of having to wait for players to show up which means a lot um, so one thing that is actually in the game is they can uh, there is a game mode that reduces the number of uh, players or not players it reduces the number of heroes so instead of having a hundred to choose from you have I think it's 20 or 25 uh, I haven't actually played this mode uh, but it basically means that you can start off with uh, a lower number of heroes and I actually think that all new players start out only being able to pick from um, that 20 hero pool uh, for the first few games I can't really remember how many um, so that is one way to reduce complexity um, another would be to have something like uh, single lane practice um, where you basically let's say you just pick a tri lane you pick, pick three heroes on one team uh, whoops so you pick these three guys here and these guys also pick three heroes you can't see them but they're actually there on the minimap so we have three guys up here and then you just uh, fight over one lane and let's say uh, you you just remove everything up here so you remove two-thirds of the map um, and in some cases this is actually doable because you can select uh, only mid which means that there's only going to spawn uh, creeps in the middle allowing you to just fight over that but something like um, defensive versus offensive tri lane would also be good practice and you don't have to do sort of fight until the base falls you could just say oh you get 10 kills and you win because that's basically the case if you get 10 wins in a tri lane the game is over um, barring uh, five-man black holes and stuff like that which can sort of swing a game um, another thing that was actually in the game uh, was the fights or the games that had pre-selected heroes um, I think this was only during the uh, international the last one which was the third I think um, yeah uh, so you basically said uh, let's jump into this game and uh, you either get to pay, play for one of these guys here whoops, or you get to play one of these guys here and then you fight each other because this sort of removes the uh, hero complexity a bit sure there are still a bunch of heroes to choose from uh, but you can make it even easier by saying you have um, you have a fixed uh, fixed level and a fixed budget and do your best with whatever you got and regardless you can even do it so regardless of how many kills you get uh, your experience actually stays the same um, allowing you to uh, sort of have an even footing later in the game and making these early uh, team fights or early fights and the laning part uh, less important because it would just allow you to reduce the uh, the feedback loop because you get to do the same thing over and over with the same uh, with the same levels and the same setup as you can see here and you could also use it as team fighting practice um, so if you have um, you don't even have to have fixed um, fixed heroes for this you could say uh, in this case everyone picks their own hero so you have 100 heroes you have uh, 11 or 16 levels and you have I don't know 10,000 gold and that's it regardless of how well you're doing you don't get more gold and you don't get more levels and then you fight until you destroy the base or get 20 kills or whatever 
Um, you can even have it so um, if one team gets wiped, everyone responds at their base with with full health, uh, full health and no cooldowns, for instance. Um, it's just a thought, but I think it would be pretty cool. You can even have it so that um, if one team gets uh, a certain number of kills, they get one point and it resets. Like if you get three kills, for instance, um, everyone respawns, so you get one point and the first guy to five points wins or whatever. Just allowing you to play the long game and sort of see a hero in its full glory because some heroes just have bad early games and some heroes uh, sort of fall off. So this would obviously mean that people needed uh, to play different heroes which might bring something back and it just might make it so that in this game mode some heroes are just better than others. Um, you could also have other stuff like teaching players to take objectives for instance. Uh, you could have it so that um, the first team to take all six outer towers wins, uh, get a certain number of kills or get to an expensive item. Um, this one is obviously pretty silly. I just picked Radiance because it's made up from two fairly expensive parts, meaning that if you gank someone a lot, um, this is going to take longer, pretty much, because you lose more gold. Um, so I think this one would actually be fairly interesting, uh, even though it's such a silly idea, because uh, this would mean that not only do you have to protect your own carry, you have to destroy the enemy carry as well, which is essentially the point of the game. This just makes it a bit clearer, because if you, you're carry has twice the farm of the opponent carry, they're going to have to play really really bad to to not win you the late game, assuming you get there, of course. Um, so those are just some ideas, I'm sorry for not bringing you all the answers, but in this case having a lot of questions is the best I could do. Um, I just wanted to get a video out there of Dota 3, 3? Dota 2. and. I've been doing some stuff with Unreal lately and I just sort of wanted a break. So I hope you got to the end and liked this video. This has been some thoughts on teaching multiplayer and thank you for watching.